Okay, here we're going to look at transport through cell membranes. We saw a little bit about the cell membrane in a previous video. Now we're looking at learning a little bit more about the actual transport process that occurs in order for things to pass through here. Remember, a cell membrane is semi-permeable, meaning it only allows certain things to come through. So starting with the basics here, this is a great description image here. We have our cell, and we're focusing on this area right here. Well, a zoomed-in version of that would be right here, our cell membrane. We have our carbohydrates, we have our glycoproteins, uh, we have our protein channels, our cholesterol, our glycolipids. If we zoom in even closer, if we look just at this area in the green box, well, that's our phospholipid bilayer. That's our bilayer of our phosphates and our lipids. And if we look at one specific of those, we call it the head and the tail region, that'd be our phospholipid, our hydrophilic head, we're having liking water, and hydrophobic tail. So how does all this come together? Well, this helps regulate the passage of substances into and out of the cells between cell organelles and the cytosol. Remember, organelles, we had a whole a lecture series on that. The cytosol, in this case, would be this gray area here. It's important to detect chemical messengers arriving at the surface. This is important for cells to be able to recognize certain hormones or other substances. And they also link adjacent cells together by membrane junctions and anchor cells to the extracellular matrix. So you can see there's a lot going on here as the functions of our cell membrane, more than just kind of creating a protective layer on the outside. One important function here is transport, and it takes on many forms. On the left of my image over here, a protein spans the membrane, again going from the extracellular space to the intracellular space. Uh, this may provide a hydrophilic channel across the membrane that's selective for a particular solute. So in this case, it's allowing uh, the small little green molecules to come through. On the right-hand side here, other transport proteins shuttle substances from one side to the other by changing shape. You can see here it's open on the top, then it's closed on top and bottom, and it's open only on the bottom. Some of these proteins hydrolyze or release ATP as an energy source to actively pump substances across the membrane. So certain ones, certain protein channels, just passively allow it to happen. Others require ATP or this energy investment for transporting molecules. Here it looks like the larger, lighter green, kind of oval-shaped ones require a different protein to be moved across this membrane than the small green ones. So there's three categories we can kind of um, rank the transport in. Um, it can be diffusion, carrier mediated, or vesicle transport. Now within these we can subdivide them into active and passive. So to transport the cell membrane it can be active. This requires energy and ATP, like active learning. Right, what we do in class requires you know energy, and you're probably to use ATP. Not necessarily your favorite thing to do, but it's that active transport still important. And then there's passive, which we all wish is how we could learn through no energy requirement. You just kind of sit there and hope that you just kind of learn all the information, but requiring no energy investment on your point. Sadly, I'll tell you right now in this class, if you haven't found out already, it tends to be more of the active transport. Within these three categories, we have diffusion, which is simply passive, uh, just things diffuse from higher concentration to lower concentration, carrier-mediated me transport. This can be passive or active. So just because something requires a protein to move it across the barrier doesn't always mean it's active transport. Sometimes it just needs that protein to act as a channel to be able to move its way through. Other times it will require ATP. And then our transport through the vesicles, this will always require energy. The formation of the vesicles and being able to pull things through, that is going to require energy. So looking here, a nice example of passive and active, remember extracellular fluid are bringing things into the cell. Passive transport is diffusion of a substance across the membrane with no energy investment. No energy investment is the key point here. It does not mean no proteins or other channels are needed. And there's three main types. There's simple diffusion, Facilitated diffusion, this is the one that does require proteins, or osmosis, which is movement of water. So here's our passive. We have oxygen just diffusing right through the membrane, an area of higher concentration to an area of lower concentration. Sodium ions require a channel. However, it's still passive. This is what we call facilitated diffusion. This is where it is simply diffusing across, but does require this protein. 
This protein isn't requiring any energy to have it occur, but the protein is necessary. And then there's active here where we're having a pump. We're actually using ATP, here to ADP, to move, in this case, sodium ions out and potassium ions into the cell. So keep in mind that facilitated diffusion, remember, still diffusion, no energy required. Active transport is actively using ATP.